So today I am coming out of the spiritual closet. I gotta, I gotta admit, it feels vulnerable for me. It's not something that I bring into my work. It's not a topic that you've seen in my videos yet. So to share this conversation with you feels very vulnerable. This is a conversation that I had with the incredible Sierra Rubin. She is an intuitive business and life coach and she helps empaths heal 100% and create an authentic spiritual brand for their business. So if that resonates with you, go on and check her out and all of her info will be linked at the, in the notes at the bottom of this video. But yeah, this conversation, it was powerful. We got into it. I shared what I believe, <laughs> what my deepest beliefs are, what my deepest mission is on this planet, what I'm, what I believe I'm here to do. Um, we talk about energy and consciousness and the light and the shadow sides of ourselves. Um, we, we really get into it. So if any of that sounds interesting you, to you, then watch on because it's, it's a good one. It was a very resonant conversation that I'm super excited to share with you. So stay tuned because that's coming right up. And if you don't know me, I'm Michelle Richter. I I'm a personal development coach who helps creative seekers lead with confidence and courage. And you can find out more about what I do on my website at michellerichter.com. And I just look forward to sharing this, this conversation with you. So here it is. Have, we have, I had a certain attachment to the awakening of humanity looking a certain way. Hmm. I had a certain attachment to this is the spiritual community, right? The new age community. And everybody eventually is going to join that community. And when you have this understanding of Akashic records and um, past and parallel lives, and you have journeyed into said lives and records and have seen other lifetimes that you are having and have had doing similar type of spiritual work and either being killed or tortured or shunned for it. Um, there's a wounding there that's deeper than just this life and informs that idea that everyone should join the spiritual community because a large tenet of something that happens when you awaken spiritually many times is you feel ostracized, you feel different, you feel like nobody gets you, nobody understands you. And finally, you understand why that is. And mm. that's because you are spiritual and you're into all these spiritual things. And oh my gosh, there's this whole community actually that is into those things. So you finally feel like you belong. Yes, yes, I totally get that feeling of like, I don't fit, I don't fit here, I don't fit there, like where do I fit? Um, and it's interesting what came up for me there as you were talking was um, this idea of like the hippie granola spiritual person um, is something that's sort of like a byproduct of like the 70s or whatever, right? And, and, and that, you know, to be spiritual looks a certain way. And something that I've been thinking about for, for years now is like spirituality can look any way. Like as many varieties of people that there are that's how many varieties of spirituality there can be like you can still be like super into hip-hop or like super into like a corporate lifestyle and be spiritual and um and so so what is the thread that binds that all and i think it's um an awareness of the power you have to the impact that you can have on your own life and the lives of those around you mm -hmm. yeah something, i love that something along those lines yeah, that totally makes sense because spirituality comes from within. Mm -hmm. It comes from within you. It is not a religion, though it can become mm -hmm. a religion when it stops being about being spiritual and starts being about doing mm -hmm. spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and I'm not here to stand in judgment of the people that are stuck in that loop, that are stuck in that in that operating from that wounded place of I never belonged. And so everybody needs to belong where I belong because mm. this is the true nature of humanity in the universe. You know, I have compassion 
for those people because I was one of those people. And um, I totally get why they're stuck in that loop. But no, it's not going to look like that. We're not, and, uh, and if you do resonate with that, with, you know, dreading your hair and wearing beads and, you know, moving to Bali for half the year. I mean, I want to visit Bali. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Just um, walk around with a didgeridoo. Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> and if that really, truly resonates with you, that's beautiful. Um, it can start to become dogmatic. It can mm -hmm. start to become a, a religion, just like anything can. Science can be a religion. Atheism can behave like a religion. Mm. Any sect can start behaving dogmatic and like a religion if you follow it blindly without questioning. That, that's why I believe the true nature of spirituality is to question everything, question yourself, and like you said, mm. the people around you and make that impact first on yourself and then on people around you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And to bring the idea of frequency in there. I, um, have you ever, ever read Power Versus Force by David Hawkins? No. It's really good. It's, um, he was a, a doctor. He did like 20 years of testing, like muscle testing um, and like kin kinesiology, muscle testing. And, yeah, I've heard um, that's really powerful work. Yeah. Yeah. And so he actually was able to create data where he actually created um, a, a spectrum of consciousness um, and all of the emotions that um, exist ranging from shame to enlightenment, right? So from like the deepest, darkest of emotions of vibrational frequency, emotional yeah. frequency up to like the highest with like neutrality in the middle. And he was actually uh, able to create a numerical value for each one cool. based on like all of this data that he collected. So the idea is um, if you are in the frequency of shame, like there's very little energy available to you, right? It becomes like, if you're deep in shame, like you can't, like the thought of going to have a shower, it feels impossible, right? Yeah. Whereas when you're like in like full enlightenment, like I'm not, I don't know that I've been there, but like, even let's just say joy is like up there, you know, <laughs> like if Certainly. you're just feeling your joy, like that, the energy that like radiates off of you is powerful. It's a powerful force. And you, you know, you just have spring in your stuff. You can do anything. Right. So it's like that, the, the energy. So all of this to say like frequency and energy, um, like we exist in somewhere along that spectrum always at some given point, And that can move around like what, um, day to day, month to month, year to year, but moment to moment even. But, um, having an awareness, I think spirituality is having awareness of where on that spectrum you are and constantly like seeking to raise that. So I, right. I have this chart right here that I'm just obsessed with. Ooh. Sticky tack to my mirror. There we go. Um, so this is the consciousness chart. Oh, I need that. Yeah. So I can send that to you. And then, so yeah. it's the idea of like when you're in the negative zone, um, the only power, power, power you have is actually force right you have to like force mm -hmm. things when you're in the positive zone like that's when it's just true power right that radiates out of you and yes. and power is so much more effective because it, it's like encouraging others to act from their power versus like forcing people to do things because you said so or whatever right? yeah through fear through, yes, fear through fear and i think that's why we're finding i don't know how you feel about delving into this topic i don't necessarily want to delve in it into it too deep but with everything that's going on in the world right now um you know we're seeing many examples of different leaderships trying to force trying to use fear to make things happen and make things um turn out the way that they're hoping and mm -hmm. it's not working mm -hmm. It's not working. And I would say, I would say, you know, that this is this idea of force and the way that it's being expressed through leadership across the board, uh, not across the board, but across the world in different areas is, is a representation of the death of, you could call it the patriarchy, but I'd like to call it the imbalance of masculine energy mm -hmm. and you know we're seeing the rise of the feminine and so what is what does that mean that just means that there's a rise in in true power and not yes. that the masculine can't have true power you know it's just in its shadow expression yeah. it uses force mm -hmm. you know and so the feminine now the feminine energy every single person has feminine energy 
within them, no matter what gender they resonate with. Yep. Um, you know, that feminine energy is rising within each of us to say, we can have the power of receiving, we can receive joy, we can receive mm. energy, we can receive, um, you know, spiritual experiences and our spirituality and utilize that true power to create from. We don't have to use force. We don't have to use fear. Um, yes. We can do things differently. Yes, yes. And, and, I, and I think, you know, it's interesting when you think about the individual, um, that power and force can exist in, in your personal experience as well. Because when you're in the sort of lower registers, like you have to force yourself to do things. You have to force yourself to like get up and do the chores or whatever, right? Whereas when you're in your power, it's effortless because right. you're, you're empowered. <laughs> yeah. So, so how do you get to that place? So how in your, I would love, in your opinion, yeah. how do you get to a place of, cause you can't just get to power. Like you have to, there's something required. What do you feel is required to get from a place of feeling like you have to force it to getting to a place of power? Yeah. I think it's about connection, connecting with yourself. Um, and that looks really different for everyone. But for me, yoga, meditation, um, expanding my experiences, knowledge, sound healing, you know, all of these things that connect me to my inner self, like connect me to that source place um, where that power lives. Because when we're up here, like on the hamster wheel all day, we're, we're not able to hear the, the wisdom that comes from within. And so the more that we can get in touch with our intuition, our inner guidance, our soul, whatever you want to call it, the more our, our power rises. But there's so many ways that we block that, right? Yeah. Um, so, so for me, like when I'm talking with my clients about this, I'm like, imagine you had an energy bar on your arm that goes from like red to yellow to green. And when you're feeling your very best, you're in the green. When you feel your absolute worst, you're in the red. And like, we want to kind of catch any dips like in the yellow zone before we get down in the red zone because it's a lot easier to get back up to green from yellow than it is from red so what yeah. are the things you can do to like recharge your energy yeah. so so like i and then we discuss like what that looks like for them like when do you feel really like peaceful when do you feel really calm right like what yeah. are the actions that get you there so yeah that's, that's cool I love that you're kind of like, you're like, okay, let's bring the impact. Okay. What's going on down here. All right. Let's shift that. And let's focus on this up here. And then I'm down here. I'm like, yeah, this happened. Okay. Let's work through this. So let's move, yeah. let's move, let's move, you know? And yeah. so it's, I feel like what we do really complements each other. Yeah. And I think everybody at different stages of their journey need different, different approaches. Totally. Totally. Um, God, there was something else that just came up there. Um, oh yeah. I, so the, it's, in, so I do work with like your saboteurs, which are the parts of ourselves that hold us back, right. And keep us from our full expression of self. And those are all protection systems. Like don't do that. You'll, it's dangerous. You'll fail. Like you, you just stay in the comfort zone. Right. So right, right. Our, our saboteurs are here to protect us from like, uh, assumed presumed danger, um, which ultimately keeps us small. And, always those things sprang into existence somewhere in childhood right like somewhere along the way you learned that if you're too loud people won't like you or like whatever right so so it's like don't say some you know don't be too big yeah <laughs> so like so yeah it's uh it's so interesting like how you know this people pleasing and perfectionism and all this kind of stuff like springs into existence um in our childhood so i think it's so important that there is a space to explore that and, and do that work as well so i agree i think what we do definitely complements and and i have clients who are like i feel like i need to do some inner child work you know and um that's just not i don't specifically do that but now i know who i can refer them to yeah definitely yeah. and i and i'm such a a big believer too in that whatever is going on inside of you is going to be reflected in your business and in your brand. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so, you know, especially because so many of us are creating, you know, personal brands, coaching businesses, course businesses. Um, was it Sunny? I, over and over, she keeps saying, you know, by 2025, the, the online course industry is going to be a billion dollar industry. Yeah, yeah. So you're not too late. Like you're getting in right at the right time. And, you know, um, 
it's just, it's the time for the, especially so many women, so many women to create their personal brands, to create mm. their businesses, to create their work that is going to help other people. And you know what you said, that pyramid effect, eventually we're all going to help uh, people. And that's, that's what I've been like ruminating on. And that's what um, I recently made uh, my latest um, like freebie is a quiz and it's based on all of the mistakes that I made um, and am still making uh, in my business um, and how it relates to personal stuff. Like, so the, the quiz is what's your brand's fatal flaw? So it's like, you know, oh my gosh, everybody, what's going on with my brand? Like, I want my brand to be good. So then you go in and you, based on the questions, then you figure out, oh, this is what's going wrong with my brand. And then you get a, th a free and it's like, oh yeah, well, this is what's really going on. Um, and often it connects back to childhood. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really what I've been playing with. I, don't, I wonder what your thoughts are on your brand and your business being a reflection of what's really like what's going on within you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was thinking about that just the other day because I'm at a stage where I'm really starting to like work on the nuts and bolts of my business and like getting the email list and getting the opt-ins and like doing this like YouTube and whatnot. Right. So like I'm trying to get a more of a handle on my, on my marketing yeah. and brand. Um, and prior to that, I was, just in this stage of like transitioning careers. I was a hairstylist for 15 years. So Your hair is beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Got to represent. So I, uh, so I That's just, I, can you come do my hair? <laughs> Nobody's getting their hair done these days. Even <laughs> myself. I'm like, Oh, these split ends. But, um, so, so initially like the, my, I've been in this for three years, but I was, doing hair while building this business on the side and initially all my posts were about like confidence and believing in yourself and you know all this because that's what I was going through and like following your passion and you know having that space to like like really working on like letting go of the self-doubt and the saboteurs and, la -la and finding your inner leader and, and all of this and connecting with your true self um, and now I feel now it's like, all right, career transition, la la, and how to like, yeah, I think even just in the conversations I'm having with my clients, it's more about like, what's my message? What's my why? What's my, you know, like this kind of stuff. So it is, it is, of course, a reflection, I think, like, it, yeah. it can't help but be because you it, it's sort of like something I heard was if you want to find your niche, look in the mirror which is easier said than done because it's hard to like see the forest for the trees, you know? Yeah. But when I came across, cause I was like, I don't know, what's my niche? Like entrepreneurs, like, you know? And, like, and so then when I came across the idea of creative seekers, I was like, okay, that feels a little more focused and it yeah. feels very true to who I am. Like I'm somebody who like paints and sings and, you know, like I've always been a very creative person. So and I've always been sort of seeking some, you know, seeking like whatever the answer is. My spirituality. Self. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think, um, I, I think that for a brand to be authentic and that's such a big buzzword these days is, is that it must reflect you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if we've talked about this since uh, we pressed record, but I want to talk about it. Um, cause you mentioned seeking and, and all that. So when it comes to spirituality and coming out of the spiritual closet, do you think it's important to come out of the spiritual closet or not honest, honest feelings? And also if you do feel like it's important at some point in some way to come out of the spiritual closet, what do you think is the best way to do that? Mm. Okay, so first question was, how is it, do you? Or is, is, it, it, is it important? Do you think it's important if you are a spiritual person mm. and you are, you know, having a brand online mm -hmm. or you're wanting to have a brand? Do you think it's important to um, come out of the spiritual closet? Um, I think that it's important if that is um, an important part of how you're operating your daily life. I get, see for me, it's like, it's kind of like 
I would love for it to us to get to a place where it's not necessary because it's just assumed like, yeah, we're all spiritual. Like probably our children's generation. Right. It'll be like, we don't need to like market that I'm a soul coach or I have, I hold goddess circles because like that, it will just be assumed. Like if we're having a circle, it's a circle of deep authentic connection. Like we don't need to call it a, a goddess circle, but I don't know. Again, I don't know. I don't have any problem with that. But it's just in my business, I, I guess I like to lean on the things that really are, are very um, functional, right? So intangible, so that it can be understood by anybody. So I'm always trying to find like, what is like the basic truth here that's inarguable? Mm. um without having to have had a spiritual experience like i can communicate with people who've had a spiritual experience because they've been there but how do you describe that to someone who hasn't experienced that right yeah. but people understand self-doubt people understand confidence right but if i'm talking yeah. about like your shadow side or your, your soul or right or your true self like or your ego you know like not everybody has that language so not everyone's going to connect with that so Ooh, okay, here's a more clear answer as I meander around this question. Um, it depends on who your target client is. Do you want to work with people that are sharing a language and experience that you are? Is that important to you or not, right? So if you do want to work with someone who resonates with like that language, then, then use it in your marketing and your, your branding. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I think that, but I also think that it, it comes through regardless. Like, I can tell if someone's spiritual or not, whether or not they're saying it just by like the way they, the language they use or like, you can tell Sunny's done, you know, a lot of the inner work, right. Just by the things she says and like she talks about law of attraction and whatnot. Um, you know, I, when I did my training at CTI, it was like a conference room in a hotel, like very corporate feeling. And yet they start talking about inner leader and like all these different things. And I was like, Oh, there's so much sneaky spirituality in here, like hidden in the language. Like, so yeah, I think it shines through. I don't think we can hide it as much as we think we do. Yeah. Um, and I imagine like with the YouTubing, like I'm just beginning. So I'm, I'm keeping it very like digestible, I guess, and trying to make it very clear for anyone. Um, like thoughts create feelings and feelings drive our actions and right so i don't need to get into like law of attraction and parallel universes and whatnot to like you know convey this idea like yeah. you know i can keep it very simple and have people understand it and resonate with it um, oh yeah uh, i'll just tell you right off the bat i i came out of the spiritual closet on accident it was an accident and it happened on Facebook in a very public way. Like I said before, I was working for a chamber of commerce. I was their director of operations. So I was doing all the things. I was wearing all the hats. I was all the business wearing skirt suits and uh, pumps and the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Uh, shaking hands with the mayor and you know, all of that. And it's, it's great, you know, but it wasn't, it just wasn't it. You know, mm -hmm. and so as I started seeking and I, and I went to that fair and she told me, you know, you're going to be a spiritual leader and all this. And I was like, you're nuts. But then another part of me was like, but wait a minute, there's, there's something about this. Um, so I started taking spiritual courses and there was this one online course where I became a certified card reader. Mm. And um, so like if they had a Facebook group in as part of the course and you're supposed to like post your homework every, every time. And so I like made this whole post. I like had my little Oracle cards laid out, my little crystals and little candles. I made it all pretty. And I like made this picture and I'm like writing about, you know, my interpretation of the reading and what I think it means and, and how it connects to my purpose as a, as a light spiritual uh, teacher, light worker, light whatever, worker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm like writing it all. And then I hit, and I'm like, post it to the group. I hit post. It was not private in the group <laughs> that was it. that post went public <laughs> to everyone on Facebook that I was friends with so all the people that I worked with all my family all of my friends from high, from people that I went to high school with and college and all those people started liking it because ah. it's like I don't even know why they were liking it but it was just like like every, like there's crystals and, and, and every, everyone knows, like, there's no way around this now. 
So it was just like, well, might as well, <laughs> yeah. might as well just move forward. So many, so many spiritual um, business people, they, they create like fake names or like brand names, whatever. I was just like, screw it. Yeah. I'm using a real name. Yeah. This yeah. I, I don't think it's something to hide. And I, and I wonder like, yeah, I don't, it's weird. I, I don't know. I guess I have to explore my relationship with this a little more, but I, I'll share stuff and I'll post about things like, you know, I've got my crystals and I've got my tarot cards and I have all my sage and everything here, you know, but. Yeah, I'm in no way insinuating that like you need to come out. I'm mm -hmm. genuinely just interested in your opinion on it. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think what you said is really, really valuable and valid that it just shines through. And, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, my next question that I want you to, I want you to answer about the awakened humanity is yeah. like, it's like, it's just going to be like that. Like one day we won't have to come out of the spiritual closet anymore um, because everybody that we're co-creating our life with or our businesses with, or our reality with, if you want to think it from a law of attraction perspective, um, we'll all be tuned in to that kind of, idea mm -hmm. um but in that vein what do you think an awakened humanity would look and feel like i think that it would be so one of my mission statements is like i am here to help raise the consciousness of the earth right that's my work as a light worker yeah. um and it's interesting to think about, well, what does that actually look like? And I'll try to say this succinctly, but I imagine it to be a world where people are aware of their personal power and aware of their impact on others. Mm -hmm. And therefore there's more harmony in the world. Mm. Things are operating harmoniously. Yeah. And yeah. I think that there's, there always has to be a continuum. There always has to be the yin and the yang, right? And like the light and the dark. So how does that fit into the equation? Well, there's more support and there's more education and awareness of how to move through the dark times. Yeah. You know, cause I don't think, I don't think a future exists where it's all just peace, love and happiness all the time, but there's just, um, less dissonance right and and i've been in times of deep tragedy and been able to witness the beauty of the pain yeah where i was like oh man i am feeling this you know like i am alive like this is a raw pain that is proving to me my existence right yeah and and so it when we can sort of remove the layer of judgment um, and uh, from the experience and just be in the experience, that just allows for more flow and harmony. Yeah. Less yeah. blockages and just more just like moving with what's That's here. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I think I, sometimes I like to think of it as like a, like a paint strip of paint colors. Okay, so if we have black and white and all the shades of gray in between right now, maybe it'll look like there's just a few less shades of gray. We're, we don't have black anymore. Just yeah. lighter shades of gray are at the bottom. You know? Yeah, yeah, like maybe the baseline rises, right? So people don't have to live in abject horror, right? And sh deep shame and guilt. Like it's, yeah, the spectrum is like... Yeah, more in the, the white to light gray range. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's sort of like, instead of like the red, yellow, green, it's just yellow and green. Yeah. Like we can catch ourselves before we dip down. We can catch each other before we dip down into the red zone. Yeah. And have, have the tools. I love it. I love it. Mm. I, I, think, I, think you're, I think you're spot on with it because awareness, you know, unity that you're basically mm -hmm. talking about unity consciousness the understanding that i am you is not just some woo woo idea it's actually for real real on an, mm -hmm. an, an energetic perspective mm -hmm. um but then also the work that you that you teach is very much about sovereignty which i think is just as important as unity 
um, the idea that you are a, an all powerful aspect of God, source, creator, what a universe, whatever you want to call it. Not that we are God, but that we are an aspect, an individualized, fully powerful and empowered um, piece mm -hmm. of that puzzle. Yeah, just a facet. We're just a facet of the whole, right? So, um, so it's about really tapping into that inner divinity, like that source, right? Like that's, that's how I see it. It's like, we're all just different facets of that source energy expressing itself in a variety of different ways. And they're all beautiful and they're all powerful in their own way. It's just about what's your lane? Like, how are you going to be the full expression of that yeah. in your unique way? Right. And, and it's that whole idea of like, you got to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you help others. So that's why I'm like, let's get this right, right? And aligned and connected so that you can then be out there sh shining your light. Absolutely. And I think, I think so many times we can get caught up because we're so used to instant gratification. We're so used to quick fixes. And we are so used to this idea of um, force as a means of effective change that we can often project our idea of, okay, well, we need to change some laws and then everything's going to be better. We need to go and shout down these people and tell them how they're wrong. And mm -hmm. then, then it's going to change in, in, in mass, in large groups of people. We, we do this because we think it's going to be a quick fix. We think that if we, and now I, on some level agree with this, if we ban all single use plastics, that somehow it's gonna make single use plastic go away. It won't. It is the consciousness of the people that needs to change in order yeah. to even make a law like that able to work. I mean, look at the prohibition. Yeah. <laughs> there is no quick fix to changing the world. You have to be the change you want to see first. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And that's something that people don't really want to hear. Yeah. It's a, it's a slow, slower, slower uh, journey. Yeah. I think, I think it can happen at both levels. I think it can happen at a societal level and it can happen at an individual level. And I think what's happening and what I really hope happens as a result of this COVID is that some values start to change because it's the values that have to change for society to change. Yeah. And again, that has to come from within. So one of the beautiful gifts of this time is that people are reassessing what's important to them. What are the priorities here? It's like, what is essential? And um, the values shift with every generation. It is happening, right? Our, our values are different from our parents, our grandparents. And the way society operates is far improved over our parents and our grandparents in a lot of ways. Like if you just look at how we include everyone in society, even just, I love like gender fluidity, all this stuff. Like it, we're just letting people be like, just be, do what you want. You know, and like, it's okay. You're allowed in the club. Like, yeah. so I, I do, I really do believe like the consciousness is, of the earth is rising. And I think it starts one by one. And I think that um, the more we stand in our full power and our full light, the more we give permission to others to do the same and, and it just spreads. Right. And yeah, and that's absolutely. My hope. yeah, absolutely. And I think that the darkness that we're seeing is, is not something new. I think it's just something that we're just, we're seeing, we're seeing mm -hmm. it now mm -hmm. and it's always, it's always been there and it needs to be seen. And my belief is is that yeah, this is maybe controversial and, and interesting that it would be a controversial belief, but it needs to be forgiven. Mm. And that means a lot of different things. And forgiveness doesn't mean condoning. No, it means compassion and understanding. And that means that on an individual, in your individual life and on a societal global scale we need to forgive ourselves for the ills of humanity we need to forgive ourselves for the ills within us we need to forgive ourselves for the darkness that's been perpetuated by humanity for the last however many thousands of years mm -hmm. because that's acceptance right that's acceptance versus resistance like and allow you know surrendering to what is so that we can then move forward right because what you resist persists right yes yes awesome conversation. I knew it would be. Yeah, this is so fun. Um, I love it. I'm just loving, like, it's so interesting. I feel like my 
vibration has been rising lately and all these connections are happening. Like I've got all these collaborations starting to happen with people and I'm just having these amazing conversations with all these people. And it's like, I'm like, Oh, I'll just open another drive file now. with some other amazing person that I'm connecting with. And That's I'm, awesome. just, uh, I'm just feeling very grateful. Yeah, me too. Just really mm-hmm. grateful to have met you and not that I'm so, I'm not surprised that you're as awesome as you are. I mean, the alien thing was a little bit like, oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just thank you. Thank you for being you. And thank you for agreeing to, to meet with me. And same to you. Like the fact that we're talking right now and you're who you are is an absolute reflection of how far I've come as far as the types of people I'm attracting for collaboration. So thank you very much mm. for that. Yes. Well, it's a pleasure. All right. Thank you so much. Wow. That's good, right? Told you. Told you there'd be some goodies in there. And I'd love to hear from you what really landed for you in this. What maybe like sparked a new awareness or connected with your soul? What um, have you thought or felt that is similar? Um, I'd love for you to join the conversation. So whatever, whatever stuck with you, let me know down below or reach out. I, like I said, you can find me at my website, michellerichter.com. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. You can see my handle on the corner of this video. So go check me out there. And if you're ready to level up your life in any area, whether that is your personal relationships, your business, money, health and wellness, spirituality, personal development, all of these different areas of your life, I can help you with that. And to get you started, I have a free guide that you can download by checking out the link in the video description below here. And that will go right to your email and you can get started on leveling up your life. So check that out and reach out. I'd love to connect. All right, take care. Well, thank you for watching my coming out video and If you'd like to see more of what I do, check out these videos here for more. I am all about personal development, career transition, and just becoming the fullest expression of yourself. So watch on.